rough, bro. Yeah, we're, we're going to roll right on into Miss Mandy Tingler. She's a mom. She's an edibles judge for the Emerald Cup, and she is a cannabis executive who wants to show you how motherhood and an executive lifestyle all go hand in hand. Coming up next is none other than Miss Mandy Tingler. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. You're almost to Christmas. I hope you finished your Christmas shopping. I haven't. So. Me neither. Uh, uh, I never do, though. I'm like a last minute person. Oh, my God. Anyway. I hate the last minute. All right. Anyway, let's talk to you guys about the potential of Japan and their relationship with cannabis. Marijuana, son. <laughs> Today, my headline reads, Japan remains an outlier as global acceptance of cannabis grows. Out of Tokyo, the first Saturday of December marked a black spot on the calendar. It was the first day of the country's new ban on products such as gummies, pre-roll joints, and vape cartridges that contain, bear with me here as I sound this out, hexahydrocannabinidyl hexyl, or HHCH. Uh, it's a synthetic cannabinoid that produces an effect similar to THC. For Japan, mostly young, growing community of cannabinoid users, the sudden HHCH ban amounted to a personal inconvenience, and for many businesses, it meant a major blow. At one of the local smoke shops, HHC products had been the top seller, purchased by a few dozen Japanese individuals or foreigners daily, the manager said. But in a time when much of the world is moving towards looser marijuana recreational drug policies, the new ban also served to highlight Japan's exceptionalism. HHCH and its numerous semi-synthetic semi cousins have gained popularity in the country precisely because the THC itself remains highly illegal. Following the HHC prohibition, the health ministry also hinted it might crack down even harder with comprehensive ban on similar THC alternatives. Products referred to as marijuana gummies are seen as dangerous, according to Tamiki Kizo, the country's recently appointed health minister. He also said, we would like to caution the public not to consume them. He says they are a serious health and hygiene concern. Japan has had a long-standing relationship with the cannabis plant, as you all know, using it for centuries to make textiles and more. But now the country has some of the world's strictest laws ever in cannabis. It's almost as if they're moving completely against the world trend. Last year, Japan was estimated to generate more than 65 billion yen in alternative cannabinoid products without an umbrella law against synthetic THC products. However, the government has been left playing kind of whack-a-mole, banning certain THC-like compounds including three others earlier this year. So you guys, the tagline of this story really ought to be Japan's moving completely against the world trend. Um, um, but I'm really interested to see what you guys think. There are a lot of synthetic cannabinoids happening over there. I'm not surprised. Man. I'm so not surprised at all. So yeah, I'm not surprised either. There was an issue a few years ago, a really famous uh, legendary Long Beach band. I'm not going to name them because I don't know how public it is, but uh, they were on tour in, in Japan and their lead singer was arrested with like an eighth and locked up for a week. And it was a huge deal. Eventually they released him and deported him and he could never go back to Japan. But that was, I think that was right before COVID. So it must have been like late 2019. So this personally does not surprise me at all. Yeah. I mean, in all in, in in all fairness, they're 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 just talking about banning all of these uh, hemp derived compounds, aren't they? No, no, no. Okay, no, so no. let me give you some context on what they're talking about here. So this goes back to what I was talk telling you guys about about this. They they call it like synthetic marijuana, uh -huh. K two spice. Yep. We had it in the head yep. shops back here. It yep. was coming from the East China Japan area. They were able to make these compounds. The feds were outlawing them. Yep. As soon as they were outlawed, they would just change the molecule at the end of the yep. compound. Yep. I remember and all it, this. It was a, like she said, it was a, mm -hmm. a game of whack-a-mole where they couldn't catch up. Yep. It flooded into the prisons. The prisons that they hated it because they couldn't drug test for it, and it was nothing like weed. Yeah, it would zonk people out. It would. Yep. They would. 
they would smoke it and like literally just pass out and fall out. It, it was highly addictive. The dudes who use this stuff wouldn't even have a bar of soap in their locker. And they yeah. would come around asking for stuff just to be able to get high. I mean, it was like crack Yeah, and uh, nothing is nothing like cannabis. So that part of it, of them trying to like get a hold of that part, I, I get it. But the, the problem that I have is like, it always gets because they market this as synthetic cannabis. Mm -hmm. It gets tied all the the ailments and all the the scourges that this yeah. substance creates gets tied into cannabis, and then they start saying, "Oh, well, we have to move forward and ban all the cannabis gummies and ban all these other things because look what it does to people." And they're pointing at hexaterodactyl that they got coming out of there or some mm -hmm. shit. That HHC and al alcoholism is crazy in Japan. Right. Yeah, and also a real, real big alcohol problem. And um, you know what? They uh, let weed come out there and uh, do some good. And I guarantee you, you'll have a lot less uh, alcoholics and a lot less um, problems mm -hmm. um, like they have right now. Uh, with the yeah. alcohol. You could buy you could buy used panties in a vending machine, but uh, weed is Ew. definitely off limits. I'm good. I don't know that from experience. Have you, have I've never been that? to Japan. Just that, like, I've never, yeah. I've never been to Japan. This is just stuff I've read about. <laughs> Hold on, what's hanging in the corner of yeah. the office? Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. That, those were not from a vending machine. They, I, I have a question. I have a question. Since they're selling, uh, since they're selling panties, do they do they sell them by like how many days they were used to? Do Come they, like, on, man. Excuse? <laughs> Jason, it sounds like you got to take a trip to Japan and let us know. <laughs> Give Jason oh, the link. Is there, is there a market for you, Jason? Heidi Whiteys. I bet. I bet. We're going to go to a commercial. We're going to be right back.